They got in quite easily and reached the tomb, which was marble and very large. They used their irons to lift the cover, which was enormously heavy, raising it just enough for a single man to get inside, and then they pop propped it up. When this was done, one of them asked, Who's going to go inside? Not me, said the other. Nor me either, said the first. But let Andruccio go in. I'm not doing that, said Andruccio. Both of them turned on him. What do you mean you won't go in, they said. By God, if you don't go in, we'll give you a bashing round the head with one of these iron poles, and that'll be the end of you. This put the wind up Andruccio. He went inside, thinking to himself as he did so, these two are making me enter the tomb in order to trick me. When I've passed them everything and I'm getting myself out again, they'll be off and I'll be left with nothing. <clears throat> he decided first and foremost to pocket his own share. He remembered the precious ring he had heard them discussing, and as soon as he was in the tomb, he took it off the archbishop's finger and put it on his own. Then he passed them the crozier, the mitre and the gloves and stripped the body down to the shirt, passing them each item, saying that was all there was. They protested that the ring must be somewhere and told him to look everywhere. He replied that he couldn't find it and pretended to go on looking keeping them waiting for some time. But they were as canny as he was. They continued telling him to keep looking and then, picking their moment, they pulled away the prop supporting the lid of the tomb and ran off, leaving Andruccio enclosed within. Anyone can guess how Andruccio felt when he heard the lid fall. He tried many times to push up the lid with his head and shoulders, but his efforts were useless. He was so overcome with the anguish of it all that he passed out, collapsing on the archbishop's dead body. And anyone who had seen the two of them would have had difficulty deciding which was the more lifeless, the archbishop or Andruccio. When he came to his senses, he broke into a flood of tears, foreseeing that he could not avoid one of two ends. If no one came to open the tomb, he was doomed to die of hunger and the stink among the worms from the corpse. Or else, if people came and found him inside the tomb, he would be hung as a thief. With these bleakly distressing thoughts going round in his head, he heard movement in the church and many people talking. They were, he gathered, going to do what he and his companions had already done. This sharply increased his terror. But when they had opened the tomb and propped up the lid, they began to argue about who should go inside, which none of them wanted to do. At last, after much dispute, a priest said, What are you frightened of? Do you think he's going to eat you, the dead? Don't eat people. I'll be the one to go in. With this, he leaned over the edge of the tomb, turned his head outwards and swung his legs inside in order to lower himself down. Andruccio saw what was going on, jumped up and seized the priest by one of his legs and made as if to pull him down inside. When the priest felt himself being pulled, he let out an enormous shriek and scrambled out of the tomb as fast as he could. This terrified the rest of them. Leaving the tomb open, they took off as if they were being chased by a hundred thousand devils. Seeing them go, Andruccio clambered out of the tomb, happier than he could have hoped, and left the church by the way he had come in. It was almost daylight as he walked off, trusting to luck 
with the ring on his finger. But he reached the seafront and finished up somehow at his inn, where he discovered that the merchants he had come with and the innkeeper had been worrying about him all night. He told them what had happened to him and they all opined that he should take the innkeeper's advice and leave Naples immediately. He quickly did so and returned to Perugia with his funds now invested in a ring after having set out to do some horse trading. Του μείνε το ρουμπινένιο δαχτυλίδι του αντρούκιου λοιπόν. Πολύ ωραίο το δίδαγμα. Ποιο είναι. Άραγε. Thank you.